Now let's do the income constraint. Well, the simplest thing we can say is that the consumer is going to consume all the income that the consumer has. And we can write that down in an equation form by saying that when consumers uh, spend all the money he spends on X, which is the price of X times X, and all the money he spends on Y, which is the price of Y times Y, the consumer is going to spend all his income M. Right? So PX times X is the amount of money the consumer buys, uh, spends on X. PY times Y is the amount of money the consumer spends on Y. And when you add those two things, we're going to assume the consumer has to consume all, all his or her income. So now how can we put this um, little equation in the same model that we've been using with good X and the, y and the horizontal axis and good Y in the vertical axis? Well, we can say that, well, what is the most the consumer can buy if he buys only X? And well, that's going to be equal to the amount of money the consumer has divided by the price of X. So if the consumer has $100 and X costs $1, the consumer can consume 100 units of X. If a consumer has $100 and X, the price of X is $2, the consumer can buy 50 units of X. And the same applies for Y. If the consumer spends all his money or her money on Y, then he can by m over py units of y. So these are the extreme cases uh, if the consumer only spends all his money or her money in only one thing. But he can also buy combinations of those two things. And all the combinations will be uh, given by this line right here, which we call the budget line. Okay. So these budget lines are, are combinations of of goods that give the cons that that where the consumer actually spends all his or her income. Remember, notice that if the consumer spends uh, buys a bundle inside the the budget line, he, uh, the consumer is not spending all all her income. And if the consumer uh, buys a bundle outside of the budget line, the consumer cannot afford that bundle because the budget line tells you how much the consumer can do.